this camera is so close to being perfect. However, it has one major flaw. Hey everyone, my name is David Orozco and I'm primarily a wedding and commercial photographer, videographer. I'm a hybrid shooter. I shoot some photo, I shoot some video, and sometimes I'll shoot both photo and video at the same time. I'm also a working professional. So what that means is that spec sheets are great. And sometimes it's easy to look at a spec sheet and think, man, that camera's perfect for me. And you hear the YouTubers who get a camera, maybe it's sponsored, maybe it's not but they just go over the, the kind of surface of what things are rather than diving into the functionality of it. This is not something that I've heard. And so as a working professional, I've been using this camera and gotten to know it a little bit better than what I've heard from most YouTube videos. The punchline is that if you're a photographer, just get this camera. The, the autofocus system in this camera is better than anything in the Canon lineup. Maybe minus the 1DX Mark III, I haven't used that camera, but the R6 and the R5 autofocus system is just stellar. Get it if you're a photography only photographer. If you're a videographer, there are some asterisks behind this and I wanna talk about those in depth. But the short answer is, is that I haven't had it overheat on me. I was cautious about how I shoot it. I shot it during a wedding full day video only and I mixed around between 4K 60, between full HD 1080 60, and then also slow-mo at 120, so 1080, 120. And I didn't have it overheat. What did happen to me is that it froze three times, and typically that was after 4K 60, kind of extended recording times about that. So that was interesting. If you are a hybrid shooter, that's where the major flaw in this camera is. With my Canon EOS R system, I shoot both photo and video at weddings at the same time. Example, a bride walks up to the aisle, she stops and then she starts walking down the aisle with her dad or whoever it is. It's enough time for me to rattle off a couple of still images and then switch over to video, grab some video footage of that and then switch back to photos. Kind of risky, but I've been able to make it work and it's really not that hard with the EOS R. When you hit the record button on an EOS R, it goes into a custom movie mode where I've specified the shutter, the aperture, and the ISO. So it's perfect. And then as soon as I stop recording, hit the button again, and then it jumps back into shooting photos. The critical flaw in this camera is that when you hit the record button, it jumps into a full auto video mode. You have no control over the shutter, the aperture, or the ISO. And I think you have control over the exposure compensation, but that doesn't really do you any good because the shutter could be floating around anywhere. The ISO could be floating around anywhere and so could the aperture. As far as I know, the only solution to this is to use the mode dial. And so in that same setting, that means that I would have to take my photos in photo mode, switch over to dedicated video mode, press record, make sure that I get my shot. And then as soon as I'm backing up, switch over again, and that's just too much like looking down and fiddling and looking back up. Like I, by that time I've missed this critical moment. And so now my capability of what I'm used to is now diminished. That's not something that I've heard anyone talk about. And so I wanted to make you guys aware of that, especially those of you who shoot photo and video, even if it's not a wedding and, and not a critical, critical moment like that, say you're on a shoot for a business, a brand or whoever it is, you're shooting both, or maybe you're just traveling around and you want to shoot both photo and video. I don't want to be switching back and forth, adjusting settings. The, the easier the process is and the smoother that the process is, it, the more likely that I am to create and get the moments that I want without having to fake anything. That's another critical part about what I do. I'm not a photographer who likes to fake stuff and set stuff up. I would rather just capture it as it's happening one time and then keep going. I know sometimes during video work, you do have to repeat things and that's fine. But the majority of my stuff, I like to be authentic about it. This doesn't allow me to do that. And so for that reason, for hybrid shooters, I can't recommend this camera sadly enough. Otherwise it's perfect. The photo mode is stellar. The autofocus is fantastic. The files are great. 20 megapixels is more than enough. Really these days, like 12 mega megapixels on up, is more than enough. Like how many of you are printing bigger than 24 by 36, bigger than 40 by 60? 12 megapixels will get you there. 18 will get you there. 20 will definitely get you there. There's no need for 45 megapixels. That's just overkill at this point, even for billboards. The ISO capabilities of this camera are great. They're still good, just like the EOS R. Really to keep this short, 
The photo aspect of this camera is fantastic. There, you're not gonna really have a want for anything. Autofocus is good, ISO, high ISO is great in low light. Autofocus in low light is absolutely stellar. Like there's nothing else that I see in the Canon lineup that is like this, um, other than probably the, the R5, which I haven't used. But photo wise, get this camera, not even a question. For the videographers only, again, I haven't had this camera overheat on it and maybe I'll do a couple over overheating tests with it, but the 4K60 looks great. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I have no complaints about the 4K60. Shot it in C-Log and there are some examples that I'll throw up right now, but it looks great. The 120 frames per second, however, that I do have problems with. I shot it in C-Log and I'll throw up some examples right now, but I'm just not happy with the quality of it. It's not like the same quality that you get from a 1DX Mark II. Um, not that you would expect it to be because clearly they've positioned this to be kind of like a 6D sort of camera if the R5 is a 5D camera um, or replacement rather. The 120 frames per second with this camera, I'm not super happy with. And that kind of sucks because 120 is like, it's nice to have. The IBIS in this camera is fantastic. I used this camera in conjunction with an RF 24-70-2.8, which has image stabilization in it. I had that on plus the IBIS in this camera, not the digital image stabilization, only the mechanical. And there's nothing more that I would want out of it, to be honest with you. Coming from an EOS R, using the digital image stabilization, which is actually pretty good, um, to be able to have the mechanical version is fantastic. It's not perfect. If you take super hard steps and you're not trying to soften your footfalls, then yeah, like there's gonna be kind of a, a jump in it while it calibrates to your movement again. But overall, it's really good as long as you're actually trying to do it. If you're trying to make it not work, then obviously it's not gonna work. Dual card slots, obviously like the fact that I even have to say this is a, is a thing. Um, they're there, so that's great. One of the main reasons that I was hesitant buying this camera was the overheating. Just the amount of overheating problems that you see on YouTube are so like rampant and it is kind of scary, but to be honest, I haven't had this overheat yet. Granted, I have been cautious. I've been mixing frame rates. I haven't shot a whole lot at 4K60 and that may change as I go out and I shoot more and have a little bit more confidence in the camera. But so far, overheating hasn't been a thing. Full wedding day, didn't overheat at all. Shooting 4K60 for extended periods of time, I would shoot it as in take a clip of maybe like 10 to 15 seconds, stop, and then go to the next moment, take another clip of 10 to 15 seconds with some time in between. Like we're talking maybe like five minutes in between. And after a while, it would freeze. The camera would lock up. It would just kind of be stuck where it was. The touchscreen wouldn't work. I would try and focus it and it wouldn't work. And it would just kind of lock up. I would have to turn it off, pull out the battery and then put it back in and then everything would start up and would be fine. That was super scary, especially to have that on a wedding day. That makes me hesitant about this camera. Just FYI, firmware on this guy is 1.1.1, I think is what it is, is the newest firmware right now. I didn't lose any of the footage, which was great, but also just to have it freeze up during a wedding day, like that's scary because what if something does happen? I don't want that to be happening to my camera on a wedding day, especially if I'm gonna be shooting two of these. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for me. Again, this is just really a first impressions video. Um, I do like this camera. For photo, just get it. It is so good. For video only, I think it does have some great features. The 4K60 freezing kind of worries me a little bit, but other than that, um, the quality is so good out of the 4K60. 120 is kind of a letdown, but at least you have it there and you can work with it. But for hybrid shooters, that's the big loss out of this guy, unfortunately, is that it's just, I don't think that it's gonna work. Maybe they update into firmware, but part of me really thinks that that's how they're segmenting this camera from the R5. So you might have to jump up to an R5 or get an EOS R, maybe even a 1DX Mark II used. Um, but anyways, so that's gonna do it for me, guys. My name is David Roscoe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Using that on top of the digital image, David,